Within a marine ecosystem, all the organisms can be classified into different taxonomic groups based on their body systems and physical characteristics. The body systems of organisms tell us about how an animal gets its energy, how does it get its oxygen, how it responds to the environment and how does it reproduce. Animals are placed in taxonomic groups based on similar characteristics of the body. However, sometimes we have to look very closely at animal body systems and features to make a classification. A shark and an orca might look similar, but one is a fish and one is a mammal, and they have quite different body systems. We classify living organisms into groups, starting from those with broad similarities up to organisms with very similar body features. This movie clip will focus on some of the common marine phylum groups of the animal kingdom. The phylum Periphera is made up of sponges. Periphera means having pores or little holes. Sponges are one of the least complex groups of animals, but even though they don't have a brain, eyes or a heart, they are still animals because they are heterotrophs, meaning they can't make food from photosynthesis like autotrophic plants or algae. These deep water sponges are filter feeding that is, sifting plankton and nutrients through their pores. They also get all the oxygen they need directly from the water. Sponges have a skeleton that is made of calcium or silica and this supports their body tissues. The phylum Cnidaria contains jellyfish, sea anemones and corals. These animals all have stinging cells called nematocysts. The word cnidaria comes from the Greek word for sea nettle. Jellyfish have soft bodies with very basic body systems, minimal eyes, no brain, no gills or a heart. They tend to drift with a current. A nematocyst is a capsule that contains a barb that injects venom into the victim, causing a painful and sometimes even fatal sting. Some jellyfish can still sting even if they are washed up on the beach because their nematocysts can still be active. Anemones are kind of like an upside down jellyfish. Their body is stuck to the rock and their tentacles extend upwards which they use to catch prey. Comb jellies or tenophores may look like jellyfish but they don't possess stinging cells so they are classified in a completely different phylum. The phylum Echinodermata contains a group of marine animals with rough or spiky skin. Sea stars, sea urchins and sea cucumbers are echinoderms. Sea urchins are radially symmetrical animals that are covered in spines which are used for defence and movement. The mouth is on the underside or ventral side of their body. As well as spines, urchins also have tube feet which are operated by a water vascular system that pumps water around the body. Sea stars also have hydraulically powered tube feet that they use for locomotion and opening up shells to feed on. Their mouth is also on the underside of their body. Sea stars utilise external digestion where the stomach is everted out of the animal's mouth and digestive enzymes are released onto the prey, usually while it is still alive. Sea stars have chromatophores, which are colour pigment cells. The colour of cushion stars can vary greatly. They also have a remarkable ability to regenerate body parts. Sea stars have no eyes, but they can detect light from the tips of their rays. Mollusks are a diverse group of animals. They have a soft body with no skeleton. Some have shells, and some have only a residual shell, or no shell at all, like this intertidal slug. Bivalve mollusks have a shell that is hinged into two halves. Mussels, oysters, and scallops are bivalves. Some have eyes, like this scallop, and some have no eyes. Sea snails that have only one shell are called gastropods. They can be carnivorous, like this tulip shell, and the whelk, or they can also be herbivorous, grazing on algae like this periwinkle. Octopus, squid, cuttlefish and nautilus are also mollusks from the class Cephalopoda. 
An octopus is in the phylum Mollusca because even though it no longer has a shell, it has a body structure called a mantle. The shell of bivalves and gastropods is made by the mantle. Octopus also have colour pigment cells called chromatophores. However, unlike echinoderms, octopus can change their colour very rapidly. They can also change the texture of their skin. The phylum Arthropoda contains animals that have jointed legs and a segmented body. Crustaceans are a subgroup of the arthropod phylum. The decorator crab covers itself in seaweed for camouflage. The velvet crab is a fast swimmer, with its back legs adapted as paddles. This hairy crab is a female and carries her eggs on her abdomen. Crustaceans such as this southern rock lobster have an exoskeleton made of chitin, which is a kind of protein. The exoskeleton has to be molted, which is dangerous for the animal, until the new exoskeleton becomes hard and provides protection again. Many crustaceans have antennae and antennules as part of their sensory system. These are used to sense chemical particles in the water to help with locating food. Barnacles might look like a mollusk on the outside, but they are actually an arthropod. They have jointed legs that they use to catch food by extending their legs out through the hard outer casing. The phylum Chordata contains animals with the most complex body systems. The animals that we have seen previously are all called invertebrates, meaning that they do not have an internal skeleton with a backbone. Animals in the chordate group have a nerve cord at some stage during their life cycle. This phylum is divided into the vertebrate animals that we are familiar with, but also sea squirts. The subphylum vertebrata contains animals with a backbone, with vertebrae protecting the spinal cord, the spinal cord being a very important part of the complex central nervous system of vertebrates. The subphylum tunicata contains tunicates or sea squirts. These animals often look very simple from the outside. They used to have a notochord, which is a less complex form of spinal cord when they were at a larval stage. Here we can see the larval stage of a tunicate under a microscope. When it develops into an adult, it will lose the tail and the ability to swim and become a sessile animal stuck to a rock or other hard substrate. It is still more closely related to humans than sponges. Marine examples of vertebrates are bony fish, such as this scorpion fish, seahorse, and flathead. They have gills to extract oxygen out of the water and may be herbivorous, omnivorous and carnivorous. Cartilaginous fish are sharks, skates and rays. These animals have a skeleton made from cartilage, which makes them very flexible in the water. Some lay eggs and some have live babies. Sea mammals like whales, dolphins and seals have lungs to breathe air. Dolphins and whales have a blowhole, which is a modified nostril. Mammals give birth to live young and feed their babies milk. Seals and sea lions are adapted to be able to spend time on land as well as water. They don't have a blowhole, but nostrils at the end of their snout. Seabirds, like oyster catchers, live near the coast, eating small invertebrates. Herons are waders that catch fish. Birds like albatross feed in the open ocean and are strong flyers. Marine reptiles are usually rare in Tasmania, although the increasing warm waters of the East Australian current may be bringing marine reptiles to Tasmania from Northern Australia. In summary, classification and taxonomy is a system of arranging living organisms into different groups based on similar body features.